Hey, and welcome to the Harry Man Show, episode 68. We have a real treat for you today. Um, it's a drummer I grew up listening to, especially in my teenage years. Huge influence on my playing. He has some big albums for me, Break the, Sile, Break the Cycle and his Grey album. He's formerly of Stained and Soil. John Wasaki, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Good, man. Uh, yeah, like I said, it was like I, I, I hate to guac on it so much, but it was a fanboy moment when you uh, responded. So yeah, this is really cool of you to do this. My pleasure. Yeah, so I kind of want to uh, kind of jump into it a little bit. What are you currently? Who are you currently playing with at the moment? Uh, I play with a band called Lydia's Castle right now. Uh-huh. Uh, it's uh, it's a little heavier. It's probably more along the lines of soil than stained. Um, however, it does have some stained moments. Um, but uh, female singer, and uh, it's like I said, it's just a little bit on the, the heavier side of things. And this is an original band, I assume, right? Yes, sir. And uh, are you guys currently playing in the Tennessee area, or you guys are uh, on tour as well? Uh, well, actually, we kind of finished up um, not too long ago. Um, we were just doing some regional type stuff, and we were doing it without um, without having anything recorded. So, mm-hmm. um, so as as of uh the beginning of december we're gonna go in and we're gonna um cut some new tracks and uh we'll have some new material definitely by uh i'd say definitely the first of the year awesome is there anywhere to yeah. kind of uh, check out to see in the recent stuff any youtube channels or anything like that um if anything i would just check out lydia's com. that's l-y-d-i-a-s castle mm-hmm B-A-S-T-L-E uh, dot com. Oh, nice. Now, I know yeah. you, you have quite a name for yourself playing some world-class acts. Was it kind of nice to start fresh with a new project and how that kind of affect your playing with a different um, angle at it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, I've been in, in Nashville, Tennessee for uh, a little over eight years now. Um, and I've had the opportunity to play with some world-class players. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I'll tell you what, man, it's very humbling to, um, <laughs> I've heard. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah. yeah to, well, just to come to a place like this where you're, you know, you're just someone else, man. If you know, yeah. and I, I was, you know, I, I love learning from, uh, new players, whether they're guitar players, bass players, drummers, singers, whoever. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, I just had the opportunity to do that and uh, also to play with a lot of those people as well. So uh, I've been very fortunate uh, to, be, uh, to be able to have done that. Now, I know I know the stereotype is Tennessee is all country, but do you see kind of rock country kind of growing in that area or is it still primarily country? Um, I'll tell you, it's a little bit of both. Um, I think, I, you know, since I've been here, it felt like it was a little bit more leaning towards that country. Mm-hmm. Uh, type thing and then that country uh, I don't know what you want to call it it's kind of a country pop kind of vibe to it you know with the Jason Aldean Florida Georgia line you know uh, groups like that and uh, uh, Luke Combs you know so on and so forth mm-hmm. um, you know they they kind of took a they put a little twist on that country thing so um uh, so it was a little bit of that, and uh, you know, it it, it is kind of leaning a little bit towards the rock thing. I'd say a little bit more mm-hmm. uh, than it has in the past before. Now, I know you're an accomplished rock drummer. Did it feel like you had to tweak your style, or kind of go back and listen to old catalogs of the country style, or did it just fit naturally like a glove? Oh man, I'll tell you, it was like start <laughs> from the ground up. <laughs> Those railroad it was like beats. Starting all over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, really was, and which you know that's that's a good thing too. Just uh, just to learn from, you know how how that style of playing is is different from what I was doing before, mm-hmm. and um, you know, hey, the more the more stuff you can learn, the better off you are, really. Um, and I, you I know, just, whether it's country, jazz, blues, rock, you name it. You know, it's all pretty relative so i almost i would have to say it's pretty healthy to get a culture shock once in a while too it's more of a you know absolutely is I, yeah why yeah. eyes open kind of thing where you're just like wow you know i'm not what i thought it was <laughs> yeah exactly yeah 
Now that we're, we're talking about styles, I mean, I can kind of make a wild guess and say that Stuart Copeland was a big influence for you. And I hear a lot of uh, Joe Picaro uh, as well. Am I correct on that? Yep. Jeff Picaro from uh, Toto. Yep. He yep. was a, a big favorite of mine. Yes. Um, you could also throw Alex Van Halen in there. Of course, John Bonham, oh, yeah. uh, who's had uh, an influence on probably anyone who's ever tried to play rock drums before. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, in even more so, too, than just rock. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, Bonham has been a huge influence for a lot of people. Uh, Stuart Copeland's great. Uh, obviously, he, he was a huge influence for me. Um, and the reason I say that is know, because you have incredible splash and hi hat work. You know, it, it's it's kind of your trademark. You know, with the stain days, especially, you can hear that that Copeland in there. Yeah, absolutely. I just thought he um, the way his his approach to the drums was mm-hmm. uh, it was creative. I mean, he he can groove, but he can also, um, you know, he also just he. I think he just viewed the song in a different way, mm-hmm. uh, more of an artist. Uh, uh, view of it where he was able to you know just uh kind of step outside the box a little bit and um you know put some some flavor to that and you know it's, it's very super creative on his part yeah and he's competing with someone like sting which is you know a monster creator on his own no question yeah so now that we're talking comedy origins though was uh the music a family thing or something you kind of thrown yourself into I'll tell you what, a lot of people ask me that, man. I'm the only one in the in my family who plays music. Really? That's pretty rare. Yeah, I know. So was it just, you just saw the drums and that was that? Or were you kind of tinkering with, you know, the, your traditional childhood where a guitar and then it kind of branched the drums? Yep, yep, that's exactly what happened. Uh, I actually started on violin, to be honest with you. Yep. Really? And I uh, played some brass instruments uh, when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was always uh, very drawn to the drums. Uh, from the beginning, uh, and then my dad finally gave in and <laughs> got me a drum kit, you know, because yeah. they are, you know, they're loud. But then again, listening to someone who's really bad at violin like myself. Yeah, and violin uh, is actually, it's probably one of the most expensive ex- instruments to play to over drums, to be honest with you. It's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, and it's actually. So, uh, and if you don't, I'm, and if you don't really know how to play it and you don't know how to play, any instrument for that matter it can be uh <laughs> it can hurt the ears yeah yeah so were you kind of modeling your uh your setup right away as your influences or it was kind of just a learning curve with that yeah i played with a lot of different um uh, setups um you know until i became comfortable with what i liked uh to use um but yeah there was a lot of experimentation going on now, were you kind of tuning the, the the snare like funk style right away, or was that something that kind of came over time as well? Yep, that did come over, uh, happen through time as well. Um, I I kind of really like that snare drum sound that really has a lot of presence and pop yeah. to it. Uh, that something Dennis, that kind of sticks out in a mix. That Dennis Chamber esque style, I guess you would call it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. He's definitely one. Uh, Stuart Copeland, once again, he's another. Um, and then, you know, a lot of these guys now, I mean, they're, they're, their snare drum sounds are just fantastic. I mean, they just, you know, it's it's just something that's so uh, out there in the mix. So, um, yeah. So were you taking lessons that. or were you just self-taught as you grew? I, I would say probably more self-taught, but I did take lessons as well. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I didn't really listen to too much of my drum teacher <laughs> said he yeah. kind of got really frustrated with me quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He always wanted me to learn on the uh, snare drum and I always wanted to play the, the drum set. So he's like, well, why don't you just, you know, why don't you learn this first and then we'll go to the drum kit. I'm like, well, okay, whatever. You know, I don't really want to do that, but I did a little bit and, uh, then he finally was just like, all right, <laughs> here you go. What do you got? You know? <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I, I know Stain was based out of Massachusetts. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. That is correct. Or was that kind of like your first band going into it? Or was there kind of just your typical local scene for a little bit? And then you kind of met up with those guys. Uh, well, we all played in, in different bands um, leading up to Stain. Uh, I probably knew Mike, the guitar player, the, the, the most. And uh, 
because we were both right in that same circuit and you know his, a lot of the guys from his band knew a lot of the guys from my band and so on and so forth and that's how we kind of met up mm-hmm. and uh and then Aaron came along and uh and that's pretty much how it happened right there but we had all played in, in plenty of other bands before Spain and uh we started out um with original music and we had learned some cover songs just to kind of uh, you know, just to pull people in and get them to listen to our original stuff. And the original stuff eventually took over. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was kind of the rest is history, really. Now, to kind of get into like the drum nerd side of it, you uh, you were kind of playing Orange County. You were one of the first people I saw play Orange County Kit. Do you remember that kit at yeah. all? Uh, I remember those just yeah, being like a, a dream for me as a child to get. But, you know, because they were custom made at the time, that was one of the first, oh, besides EW, but how was that kit sounding for you at the time with those loud snares? Yeah, uh, they're great. I mean, they, I still actually have a few sets of them. Really? Um, yeah, yeah, and they're the original ones. Um, I know that they've sold, uh, they sold the company to a bigger company right right now. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they were, they were all handmade. Everything was uh, lays out, all of the, uh, all the bearing edges were all done, um, by hand, um, you know, and they were done on Keller drum shells, uh, which are probably still one of the best. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, at the time it was, um, there was just a handful of us. I mean, I know, uh, you know, it was Adrian Young from, uh, uh no doubt and Travis, uh, Travis Barker, of course. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, Chad, uh, from uh, 311 yeah. was in there John from a biscuit and so on and so forth Abe actually was in there for a little bit from Death Bones, so um yeah I, I know, I, know just, I just remember watching MTV going man I'm gonna have one of those one day <laughs> you know there's awesome yeah. looking, awesome looking kit and I was kind of they did the unique shallow tom sizes and you know the, the ported snare drums which is cool stuff yeah they sounded as good as they looked too yeah so yeah so uh yeah. you know as Stan kind of went to go blow up did your uh your setup change? Did you kind of bring it down, or did you kind of add more symbols as you went? I ended up adding more symbols, actually. <laughs> um, I did. I know. <laughs> uh, I, I'm still trying to add stuff. Actually, I'm. You know what? It's funny. Now I kind of take stuff away, and then I'll add it back in because I kind of miss it. Yeah. So I, I'm still. I mean, I think a lot of guys they still just experiment with certain things and. Um. You know, just to try to get certain sounds. It depends on what you're playing, too, you know? Yeah. Um, that has a lot to do with it. Now, were you with Zildjian so. the whole time through, or? No, actually, I started with Pasty at first. That's what and, I uh, Yep. And uh, excellent stuff. Um, it's not, I wouldn't call it, um, you know, it's not the, the best stuff to take out on the road, but it sounds fantastic in the studio. I agree. And, uh, so Zildjian, yeah, Zildjian was right there. I'm from Massachusetts. They're from Massachusetts. So, uh, it was just a good fit for me. And, uh, all my artist relations people were great there. Uh-huh. Which I still keep in contact with, obviously. So. Yeah. Now, were you, I, I know you were one of the first ones to kind of push like the Oriental line. Were you kind of, what kind of splashes were you using from Zildjian once you kind of got going with them? Eights and tens, all of A custom. A10, right. nice. eights and tens, yeah. Nice. Uh, and then as far as the Chinese symbols go, I mean, I would 14 to 16, 18, 20 inch at one time, which is just a bomb, you know. I mean, uh, you know, I, I just experimented a lot with that kind of stuff. I mean, I like stuff that kind of just stands, you up. know, has that attack yeah. type of feeling to it. No. And, um, so, you know, uh, I'd say probably uh, the 18s are probably the best for me. Yeah, that's what I use myself. So it kind of yep. to shift gears back, I mean, I know you did some really huge tours back in then. What was your favorite, like, was the family uh, values tour big for you? What was your favorite uh, part of that, that era? Yeah, yeah, the family values was a lot of fun. I mean, there, there wasn't too many bad tours that we've ever done. Uh, we were lucky enough that we got on right away with uh, – with Limp Biscuit, um, I mean, that's kind of how we um, were able to break into the scene mm-hmm. as fast as we did and almost fast track our way to, uh, you know, where we did. 
mm-hmm. uh, was because of Fred Durst and uh, the, the guys from Limp Bizkit. Um, so they took us out right away, and we got on tours with uh, Kid Rock and Corn like pretty much immediately. Mm-hmm. So uh, we were pretty fortunate that we were able to, you know, get those kind of tours. Yeah, they've been a bit wild, kind of like surreal at the time too, as well. Sure, sure was. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, and we 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 put the work in for sure at first. Oh, but, no doubt. Yeah, I, I believe that. Um, but yeah, but it it, it, it we were fast tracked pretty good too. So no, I think you guys would have sold, you know, regardless of what happened. To be honest with you, you guys just had a huge sound. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. So um, yeah. Then after staying with them while you joined a band, Soil. How did that uh, the gig come about for you? Yeah, uh, well, I love I love Stained and thirteen, and I was out uh, out cut my lawn one day, and my wife came out at the time. She's like Tim King from Soils on the phone. She's like, "You want to talk to him?" Jesus. And uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I had, well, I had known Tim from uh, from doing some tours with them, and always liked their stuff as well. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, he asked me if I'd be interested in, and, um, you know, it started off as just doing a few, you know, a few, few gigs here and there. I mean, they were looking for someone to go over to, uh, Europe with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, I did, and, uh, I ended up hanging around for about a year, year and a half or so with those guys. And, uh, that was a whole lot of fun as well. So, and they're a little bit, I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, a little bit on the heavier side. Did you kind of have to you know, shift gears with them a little bit? Yes, I did, and I loved every minute of it. Really? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, Stained was kind of more known for the so far away, it's been a while, mm-hmm. outside, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, with Soil, it was, it, was, it was pretty just, you know, in your face, heavy rock and roll, you know. Did you uh, record any albums with Soil? I did. I did. Um, it's called Live in London, mm-hmm. and uh, it's a live record. I mean, I didn't do any. Um, I mean, I'm not playing any of my own material, but it's uh, most of the stuff that um, they had the drummer they had before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, you know, he's the one who wrote most of the stuff. And you stay with them until about 17 or 18, I believe, right? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> 14, 15, yeah, 16, 17, I'd say, something like that. Mm-hmm. Now, yep. I wanted to talk more about your, your recent setups. You joined Yamaha in your later years. Um, I noticed you yep. always played the O Custom line. Do that, those drums feel like they had a lot of attack on the higher end side? They do. Um, I started out, actually, it wasn't the Oak. It was, uh, I started out on Maple, actually. Yeah, absolute. And, um, then I went over to Birch, and then I then I started um, with the Oak Customs because uh, it took them. It, I don't even think the Oak Customs are out yet. At no, the they, time. they came out around 2013, I believe. Yeah, so they weren't they weren't there right from the beginning. But um, man, they're they're just they do they just have so such a great attack to them, mm-hmm. and uh, I still use the the use those still now i mean i love those i mean it depends on what gig i'm playing but Mm -hmm. they're um, they're loud they're very loud (laughs) i always i always get that i always get that yeah because it's a 24 inch kick drum too so yeah it's perfect Um, yeah it's hard it's harder to control a 24 than it is a 22 so now what what would be your snare of choice these days oh man that depends too um if there were just one you had to grab out the door and you had to go now, which one would you go for? Yeah. Uh, I'd probably go with a Steve Jordan Yamaha. Oh, excellent. That's an awesome snare. Yeah. Can't <laughs> go wrong with that. You can get nice low end tones from that. You can get some nice uh, high pitch stuff that cut through. I mean, it's, it's a very versatile snare drum. And it weighs about two ounces. It's a weird delusion. Yeah. With that, with that snare. It literally... Yeah, exactly. Instead of dragging a bell brass or something like that, which <laughs> yeah. is, you know, yeah, you no, need three people to carry it in. <laughs> have you ever used a bell brass? Oh, yeah. I, I still have one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Those things are relics of these days. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're, they're great. I mean, they're, they're good for certain things. Uh huh. Definitely. Uh, very abrasive kind of sound to them, mm-hmm. uh, but they definitely cut. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, with your local band, I mean, what, what would be the next gigs that you guys are actually playing uh, in the Tennessee uh, area? 
Well, like I said, um, our main focus right now is, is to get this material finished um, in the studio, uh, which, like I said, is uh, we're gonna we're gonna start with drums and we're gonna that's, we're doing that first week in December. Mm-hmm. So that's coming up in three weeks, so I really got to get it together. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I'm just hoping after that we can get guitars and bass and drum uh, and uh, vocals rather done. And uh, hopefully after mixing and mastering, everything's going to be ready to go at the beginning of the year. Now, with your so approach, early, I'd, I'd say early January. With your approach to going to the studio, how do you typically prepare? Do you kind of just, you know, practice with a click through it? Or you kind of you guys just kind of write when you're in the studio? Yeah, well, we're going to, like tonight, for instance, we'll just, uh, we'll run through the songs. And um, we I don't think we've really set, uh, a couple times we have just from uh, demoing stuff out, but we set clicks, but um, we haven't really set a permanent click for each song yet. But once we do, I will practice along or play along rather to uh, to the click uh, to the click as well okay. with the song. Are you playing single or double pedal on this one? Uh, I'm playing double pedal. Oh, nice. Have you ever have you ever experimented with the two bass drums, or you always just use the double pedal? I'll tell you what, um, that's what I'm going to go for next is a double, double bass drum. Sick. (laughs) This is awesome. Yep. Bigger, the better. (laughs) Now, uh, who, who who are you watching nowadays? Is there anyone that you're kind of seeing coming up or anyone you kind of reach back and still watch YouTube videos of or anything like that? Benny Greb. Oh yeah. Yeah. That guy's an alien. (laughs) (laughs) I can't get enough of that guy. He's so good. Um, He makes his kitchen sound good. I don't know if you ever seen that. I video. know, I know. He <laughs> he hits the side of the drum. It sounds better than most people hitting the square on the head. You know. Yeah, that, he's just on that level so, that you're just like, I don't know. I don't know if I ever really get that deep, but I'll try. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then you know, and then I always listen to Danny Carey, of course, from Tool. Yeah. Who's just so super beyond crazy. Uh, just. Uh, Have you ever had an opportunity to play any shows with him? Oh, cool. No. Okay. Yeah. It, no. Just trying to find any recorded material of Danny Carey is, is a, a feat of its own. It's hard to find a picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's seven foot tall, too. I know. You right? <laughs> can't really miss him. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's a badass. Yeah. He really is. And uh, he's just so creative in what he does. And his way of uh, approaching a drum set is just unlike most people do. And, uh, uh, it's 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 very inspiring to watch him and listen to him and try to figure out what the heck he's doing. <laughs> um, so with Benny Grubb saying, are there any like I don't know if you're a, like a, a book nerd like me, but are there any books you recommend or DVDs you recommend or really channels at this point that you recommend anyone check out? Um, let's see. Yeah, well, there's um, well, a lot of the drummy drummy stuff is really good to. Mm-hmm. listen to because you get a little bit of everyone um i got some friends in town here who are on there and uh they're on those drumio videos mm-hmm. and uh that's always good to learn from because they all have different styles and and, and all those it's the more you listen to the better off you're going to be mm-hmm. um and that includes even stylistically playing, you know, like from jazz players to and i'm terrible at jazz but if i listen to a guy uh, play jazz. I'm like, there's something I could pick up here, you know. Yeah. So, um, what, what, I just try to keep that, you know, keep that door open to listen to as many different uh, styles and players as I possibly can. Well, with being busy as a current man, do you have like a practice regiment, or you kind of just sit down and just go through the stuff you're working through, or do you kind of go back and practice any kind of routines or anything like that? Uh, a little bit of both. I'll start out usually uh, learning what I'm supposed to be learning with then I <laughs> and then my mind kind of wanders and I start doing my own thing. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I try to be uh, ready for rehearsal and, and, you know, writing and things like that. Um, but, you know, playing on your own is, there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, uh, as long as it's helpful to your playing and you, you know, you're getting the, the opportunity to play and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sometimes you might, you might go off on something and, and apply that to whatever it is that you're working on at the time. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, yeah. yeah, I'm really excited to hear your uh, upcoming CD release. So, and uh, like I said, is I know you got some stuff coming up today, but it's a real pleasure to have you on the show, and it's kind of a bucket list from my childhood, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, but- <laughs> well, thank thank you so much, Dustin. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, man, when uh, when I get something ready to go, I'd be more than happy to send it to you. Yeah, well, I'll definitely share it like I do for everyone on the show. And yeah, I mean, like I said, you just have an incredible groove. And I, 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 Thank you. I, I think that it was substantial to that time period and, you know, that setup you had, I just, I just want to give you a lot of praise for that. It was awesome stuff. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, as you can say, you can um, find the show on Spotify, YouTube, and all the, the platforms. And thanks guys for listening.